Hello and welcome to another episode of Al Zoo. Today, Lilac Schoenbeck is with me in the zoo. She's a cloud guru over at BMC Software. Uh, we had plans to record this uh, last week, but with Lilac being based in Boston, the tragic events uh, forced us to postpone a little bit. Uh, welcome, Lilac, and maybe you can share with us what it was like. Was it terrifying? Was it? it was terrifying. It was awful. It was actually all sort of happening about three and a half miles from my house, um, which in Boston feels like uh, three towns over, but I think in any other part of the country is dangerously close by. Um, it was really scary. Um, it's been very nice to see the city pull together, though, um, and really stand behind anyone who was injured and all the first responders. It's been heartwarming. It was quite amazing to see all the way from over here on the West Coast how you, as a city, and then the state, and then the whole country came together as one, and I guess that is one silver lining we can take with us from all of this. Uh, as we enter into the topic of cloud, one thing that has become quite obvious over the last few years is that we all believe we know what the cloud entails, all the way from what it can offer to how you manage it. But the truth is many of us don't have that working knowledge that you need. We don't know all the details. We don't really get the full thing uh, as a holistic approach. So maybe you can share with me and the audience a little bit about what are the benefits? How do you put together a cloud and how do you manage it going forward? Sure, that's a great question. Um, we like to talk about it as three pieces. We like to talk about planning your cloud, building your cloud, and running your cloud. So. I always like to start a cloud conversation up front with people and say, there's two big questions you have to answer. Who are the people who are going to be using this cloud? Because you're not building it just to be pretty. And what do they want to do with it? What are the services they want? And that will drive the rest of the decisions in your cloud. If you have a group of developers using a cloud to build software, that's a very different cloud than if you have a bunch of scientific researchers running big data analysis on it. That's also very different from using you know, a bunch of marketing people who want SharePoint. Those are very, very different use cases. And many companies actually have all three. Um, then we talk about building it, right? So you gotta turn a set of servers into a cloud. There's some magic sauce there. Um, our magic sauce is cloud lifecycle management, BMC cloud lifecycle management. Um, and what that allows you to do is, is basically provide an end user portal that exposes a service catalog with all of those different services in it. And the secret to doing this right, of course, is you want to create a very diverse service catalog to meet all those user requests. But at the same time, as an administrator, you had better set it up so that you're not spending hours and hours and hours handling exceptions, making these a little different for everybody who wants them, setting up new services and so forth. You want to make it as flexible as possible. And then the part that everybody likes to forget, I like to call it the man behind the curtain part of the cloud, is, is running the cloud. Because as a user, even as a user of something like Amazon Web Services, right, you get your service, you're super happy, you're using it. And you're not thinking there's 300 IT guys scurrying in a data center somewhere, making sure there's capacity, there's performance management, change management is happening, patch management is happening, compliance is happening, all those things that we in IT know need to happen on an ongoing basis. So that's the run bit of cloud. That, and then when you're building this right, what you've got a, a fairly broad set of users that are able to interact with your cloud, get what they need, and get it quickly, right? And so those are two things. You want to make sure that they're not configuring whatever it is that you give them for days and days and days and days. They need to get exactly what they ask for. They want their burger made up their way. And then the second half of this is once they've gotten the service that they need, they expect that to keep running day after day. We spend a lot of time focused on did it provision in 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 25 seconds. Truth is, if it goes down every Thursday at lunch, it's not going to make any difference how long it took to provision it. So that ongoing management becomes a really, really critical, both to your end users and to you, because it could incur a lot of extra work for you if you're not doing it right. Is the cloud really for everyone? It sounds that it's predominantly for large corporations with a very IT intensive environment um, where there are, you know, need for certain memory and storage and compute and so on to be to spin up quickly? Um, I think there's a different version of the cloud for different people. So uh, for companies that are building out a private cloud environment or a hybrid cloud, a lot of companies are using public cloud resources now. Having this kind of management technology that can manage across those is critical. 
But for a smaller organization, one that might be using mostly external resources, for example, um, then you look at how you manage just that uh, component of it. Not, not everybody needs a huge intensive data center. But the thing that I always remember from virtualization, back in the day, I think you might remember, when somebody said, I virtualized 10 servers, and for some reason I have 300 virtual machines. And that happens because when you open the floodgates, it's amazing how much extra demand has been pent up. So I would say it's a little more than what you anticipate by counting the servers in your, in your footprint right now. One thing that I admire with your work and, and one reason I wanted to have you here in the zoo uh, is your ability to simplify the cloud. Right now it's a lot about how powerful it is and how big it is and you know how much cool stuff you can do with it. But you've taken almost a Lego modular approach to it, an educational uh, way of looking at it. Do you, do you believe that that you're looking at these type of technology issues from a different perspective? Does women approach technology in a different angle than the average Joe? Well, I think so, but I've never been the average guy. Um, <laughs> my perspective is one of technology is, is, a, is a means to an end for a bunch of human beings, right? And, and so what would make a user happy? What would make an administrator less stressed out? I think one of the things that women bring to bear on technology and technology marketing in specific is a real focus on the, frankly, the emotional state of the buyer. What is it that they need? What will bring them comfort? What, get, what scares them? And similarly for the user. So you concern yourself with the emotional state of the users, the emotional state of IT, um, and recognize that, that a big part of what makes somebody move forward with the technology is whether it makes their jobs easier or their lives easier, right? Um, it isn't because I think the hard part is getting a really authentic words behind it, right? Because you can sound very pedantic really quickly. I, in the past, I've done a lot of focus groups and things like that where you actually hear the words out of people's mouths, but over time, you actually start to listen. When you're even at a trade show or talking to a customer, you hear them say something like, God, I hate it when my beeper goes off at whatever. Or, you know, I once heard a customer just say, I'm really, really worried about what happens when these services come online. And you think to yourself, that's a very authentic sentence to be able to work from and think, well, how does this technology solve that problem? How do you think the cloud management tools will evolve over the next three to five years or even three to five months? I think we're going to see right now, it's funny, there's this huge focus and DMC is certainly a big part of it on making sure that you can layer the cloud over any kind of underlying technology. You know, and um, we do, you know, AIX underneath because people care, you know, deeply about that all the way into, you know, public cloud services and all the x86 in the middle and so forth. I think in two years, nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to know. Someone in IT is going to need to know. And obviously in IT, we need to understand what's underneath. But I think end users become more and more and more abstracted. And what they really are going to want is an actual business service. Nobody really wants Linux. That's what I always say. Nobody wants Linux. Linux is lovely, but it's what you layer on top of Linux that makes that useful. Well, I really want to thank you, Lilac, for taking the time and joining us here in the zoo. Pleasure. And I uh, really feel like we've learned a lot of today. Next week, Katie Tierney will join us in the zoo to talk about SaaS services. Thanks, Lila. Thank you.